Let me start with the first introduction to the first uh, paper of today, which is sent to us from the Institute of Production Engineering and Machine Tools from the Leibniz University Hanover in Germany. The authors are uh, Mr. Denkana, Mr. Krödel, and Gartzke. The paper is entitled Process Design of the Patterning Process of Profile Grinding Wheels. We are looking forward to your presentation. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tobias Gartzke from the Institute for Production Engineering and Machine Tools of the University of Hanover. I'd like to present my research paper with the title Process Design of the Patterning Process of Profile Grinding Wheels. Profile grinding wheels are used in applications such as turbine blades, gear wheels or crankshafts. Common in these applications is the use of tools that consist of conventional grains. However, these grains face challenges when increasing the productivity of the grinding process. Conventional grains have low thermal conductivity, which leads to a high temperature in the process. This results in tensile residual stresses or grinding burn on the surface of the machine machined workpiece. One approach to reduce the thermal load on the workpiece is the patterning of the grinding wheel topography. This process is shown as an example on the left. It uses a patterning tool rotating at a higher rotational speed as the grinding wheel. In this example the tool features only one cutting edge, but a higher number of cutting edges is possible. This approach was investigated for conventional grinding tools in the past. However, it is not yet applicable to profile grinding processes. One reason for this is that the process design, especially with regard to various angles, does not yet exist. To conduct the process design, I choose two steps. First, I calculated the process kinematics in an analytical approach, which is shown here on the left. Within this calculation, simplifications have to be done. In order to validate this approach, the second step, a numerical calculation, was conducted. Therefore, a model was created in the material removal simulation software, IFW CUDS. The process design uses the established value of the effective contact area. This value can be calculated by the ideal circumferential area reduced by the area of the patterns. As the number of patterns can be adjusted by the process setting parameters, the calculation of the resulting area of one pattern is of interest to the process design. The area can be determined by the length and the width of a pattern. The length can be calculated using a linearized grinding wheel surface. This is compensated by an equivalent patterning tool diameter, which is a common calculation in dressing processes. The width can be calculated by using another simplification. The movement is calculated without a change in angle between the patterning tool and the grinding wheel surface. This is shown on the bottom. The resulting width of a length is calculated for two examples, which is shown on this slide. The examples differ in the used shape of the cutting edge. Both shapes are common in patterning of grinding wheels. It can be seen that the triangle shaped edge leads to a sharp end of the pattern, while the round edge leads to a round end. The shape that results of the round edge can be also described by an ellipsis. In order to transfer this to profile grinding wheels, two angles have to be defined and considered. The angles are shown on this slide on the left. The profile angle describes the angle change of the grinding wheel surface. The inclination angle describes the change from the surface normal direction. 
The calculation of the length of a pattern, including the angles, can be done calculating first of all in L0. This describes the geometrical interception of the circumferences. When an angle is applied, this circumference has to be projected into the surface normal direction. This distorts the angle to an ellipsis, which is shown in the middle. On the right, you can see that this is similar for the grinding wheel with its profile angle. The length of the pattern can then be calculated by multiplying a factor that prolongs or shortens the L0. The formula for the L0 is shown on the down right, however, the development of this shown is shown in my paper. The width of the pattern is calculated by the maximum width, which is given at the maximum depth of cut. This width is a, cut, is a result of the shape of the cutting edge. When no angle is applied, it can be calculated by an interception of a circle. When applying an inclination angle, you will get an increase in width. Whenever the straight part of the cutting edge is tilted into engagement, from this angle on, the width increases with increasing inclination angle. The profile angle, however, has no influence on the width of a pattern, as the patterning tool is defined in surface normal direction. As I described before, I validated this analytical approach by a numerical removals, a material removal simulation. On this slide, you can see a result of three simulations in which the corner radius was varied. By this simulation, it is possible to evaluate the length, width and area of a pattern. Obviously, this simulation includes errors as well. The resolution in dexter size and time has an influence on the results. However, the error was calculated and is below 1%. For a validation of the analytical model, the results of the simulation are compared to the results of the analytical model. The analytical model is shown here in green. It is only printed whenever the difference between both models is above 3%. It can be seen that the error increases with the inclination angle. The reason for this is that the shape of the pattern differs. In case of the analytical model, the area was calculated by the ideal shape of an ellipsis. In case of a numerical model, it can be seen that the interacting straight part of the edge leads to a thinner shape towards the end of engagement. This is similar to the resulting shape of the triangle-shaped edge shown before. In addition to the process design, I presented my work first experimental results of the grinding process with pattern grinding wheels. Here you can see the experimental setup. I'd like to highlight the swivel jig that enables the implement implementation of the inclination angle. Within the study, cast iron was ground using two silicon carbide grinding wheels. From the results, you can see that the process forces are reduced when applying patterns to the grinding wheel topography. When comparing both grinding wheels, it can be seen that the influence of the pattern patterns increases with the increase in grain size. The reason for this is the interaction between the grains and the surface. However, this is part of the further work of the IFW. This brings me to the end of my presentation, in which I'd like to summarize and give you a brief overview of my further work. As I showed you, the process design is the first step to investigate the influence of patterns on profile grinding processes. I calculated this in an analytical approach, which I validated in a numerical simulation. 
The further steps are started by the design of the patterning tool. Main part and this step is the investigation on the wear behavior of the used CVD diamond. Then I investigate the contact condition between the grinding wheels and the workpiece surface under the influence of the patterns, followed by an investigation on the application behavior of the pattern grinding wheels. In the end, potential and challenges are investigated that have to be faced when implementing the patterning process to grinding machines. So thank you for listening to, the, to my part at this year's SIRP E and feel free to ask questions or get in touch with me via email. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tobias for your presentation uh, and sending us this video. Um, we are going to get a call to Tobias right now. That's why you are uh, listening to the Skype call at the moment. Uh, we had a delay, so I would like to just ask you to have a one second patience. And then uh, I think in a second we are going to be back online. So you are on live stream too on the last day of the SIRP E Global Web Conference. And we are going to have a session with three presentations here today. We have been just uh, watching the first presentation from our colleagues um, from the Institute of Production Engineering and Machine Tools from Leibniz University in Hannover, Germany. Um, the paper is entitled Process Design of the Patterning Process of Profile Grinding Wheels. And the authors are Mr. Denkana, Mr. Krödel, and Mr. Gartzko. Um, so, I'm looking at our live chat. There are no questions on the live chat, but we have already received some questions and I would like to discuss um, these questions with our uh, presenting author, uh, Tobias Gatzka, in a second. Um, before doing it, please um, let me remind you again to get back on live stream one to watch the industry panel discussion at noon German time as well as closing session. We would also appreciate your posts on any social media about your contributions or our conference with the hashtag of SIRPE. Thank you very much for staying with us. Um, if you have any further comments, recommendations to our conference, it would be a honor to receive them and make the best and out of it and improve the conference series next year with our colleagues from Belgium. Um, before getting to the Skype connection with Tobias, I would like to also announce you um, one more time um, regarding the first live stream. We have a paper session there about the field value streams and life cycle engineering. I'm looking to my uh, technical support if it works. Uh, so far, I couldn't get a connection to Tobias. Um, let me just briefly uh, forward. Um, I think he is calling in at the moment. I think he's calling in at the moment. Could you please check it? Okay. So um, we have a failure for connecting to Tobias. Um, so let me just send the questions to him through our live chat. And maybe he's able to answer those questions for, um, for the commenters. Let me just do it for a second. Okay, you are going to see it in a second on the live chat. So Tobias, thanks again for your contribution and hope to uh, you can listen to this um, live chat and can answer the questions. So we have um, a short break now until the next presentation in order to um, start with the next presentation on time at 
11.20 German time. So please stay with us and we will be back soon. Thank you.